In this tutorial, I'm going to try to show you the way I configure the rotary axis on my CNC router. And I will try to explain how I've calculated the timing gears ratio and briefly cover the way the stepper motors work, as well as to calculate the necessary parameters that are required to configure Mach 3 for a rotary accessory. With the rotary axis, we can make geometrical shapes on cylindrical parts, engravings, lettering, and so on. But you have to be aware that there are countless motor types and controllers that require different settings or parameters than what I use on this tutorial. I just hope that this video serves as a guide, especially if you are seeking information to build your own rotary axis. I hope you like it. I'm going to start by removing the covers on this headstock so we can expose the timing gears. That way we can calculate the gear ratio between them. I had to do this because I used these gears from another mechanism and therefore I didn't have the parameters. Nevertheless, it might be useful if you want to use any type of gears you might have handy. I'm going to start by marking these gears only to visualize their movement. That is just to see how many turns approximately the small gear moves compared with the big gear. Very well. Now that I have marked the gears, I'm going to input on Mach 3 on the MDI screen, a manual data input screen, the code G00A360. The machine should turn the big gear 360 degrees or one turn. And we're going to count how many turns the small gear makes. One, two, three, four, and close to a quarter turn. Now, if we input the code G00A00, it's going to turn backwards until it achieves its original position. Now we know this small gear turns almost uh, four and a quarter turns compared with the big gear. So now what we're going to do next is to count how many teeth the big gear has. And we're going to count how many teeth the small gear has also. When we do that, we're going to divide those two numbers to get the exact gear ratio. 68. 69, 70, 71, and 72. And this little gear, I counted 17 teeth. So then now we have both numbers, 17 and 72. So now pulling out the calculator, we'll divide 72 by 17. And the result is 4.23529 turns. It's almost four and a quarter turns, a little less. So then with this number, we can now calculate exactly the next parameter. So to do the calculation of how many steps per degree we have to assign the rotary axis or A axis, we have to take in account how these motor types function or operate. So to visualize that, I will illustrate graphically the stepper motor and how it works. Usually the stepper motor, uh, most of these little motors pulsate uh, or move in little steps of 1.8 degrees. Of course, if we want to see how many steps per revolution there are, we have to divide 360 degrees by 1.8 degrees equals 200 steps per turn or revolution. But we also have to take in account that we can increase the precision or resolution of the motor by electronically uh, controlling the pulses, making them shorter. Therefore, the angle will be finer. This action is called micro-stepping. This micro-stepping is controlled by manipulating deep switches at the controller board. The micro steps are changed selecting the proper configuration according to the data sheet that came with your board. Usually one step, one half, one eighth, or one sixteenth of a step are available on this board. Therefore, the higher the resolution, the slower the motor will be able to turn, 
due to kernel frequency. Okay, first we have to get the steps per revolution for this motor. By design has a 1.8 degree step. So we have to divide 360 degrees, which is one turn, by 1.8 degrees. We get 200 steps per turn or revolution. Next, we're going to calculate the micro steps per revolution, multiplying 200 by 16, which is the micro step setting I selected on the controller, gives us a product of 3200 micro steps per revolution. We have to remember we have a gear ratio of 4.235291. to 1. So we're going to multiply 3200 micro steps by 4.23529 and the product is 13,552.9 micro steps per revolution for the big gear. And lastly, this amount we are going to divide by 360 degrees to determine the micro steps per degree that the big gear should turn to move or rotate one degree. So this result we will enter on the steps per unit window on the motor tuning section on Mach 3. Let's go to the second part where we're going to change the program settings. Okay, let's open the Mach 3 loader window. But we're not going to open the program. Instead, we are going to create a new profile, cloning from an existing profile and we're going to call it rotary axis. Next, uh, we are going to open the program. Now that the program is open, we click on the reset button. And first, we will go to the configuration menu, and we're going to make sure that in the ports and pins area, check that the port number one is enabled, Check that the kernel speed radio button is set to 25,000 hertz. Next, we go to motor outputs. They should be enabled only on the axis we're going to use. In this case, I'm going to use the X axis, the Z axis, and A axis, but not the Y axis. However, I'm not going to enable the A axis at this time to show you ahead what happens when it's not enabled. These numbers that you see here are the step and direction pins and the LPT port selected. They match the pin number on the parallel port connector that uses 25 pins. The controller I'm using has a number 4 pin for step and 5 for direction. The Y axis, we leave it at 0 because we're not going to use it. The Z axis, 6 and 7, and A axis 8 and 9. The port selected for all the connections is port number 1. We apply the changes, push the reset button, and then go to configurations and we save the changes. Then we go to configuration again, and we need to make sure that the slave axis is not selected. When we make this change, we get an indication from Mac 3 telling us to restart the program to make the changes effective. But we will do that a little later. Let's push the reset button. Now we go to general configure, and we make sure that the A, B, and C axis are checked as angular. This means that their movement will be measured as rotational, not linear and therefore measure in degrees. Remember, we are configuring the A axis as rotary. Lastly, we have to make sure, and this is very important, that the home slave with master axis window is not checked. Very well, let's close the window and save the changes. Next, we'll go to the motor tuning section. To configure the axis, we have to see if the buttons are enabled. X axis is enabled, Y axis is not. That's okay. Z axis is enabled, 
However, I did not enable A on purpose. On the ports and pins section, motor outputs, remember? You can see here that A access is not checked. Let's change that. Apply the changes. Close the window. Save the settings. Now we can come back to the motor tuning window. Now we can see that the A axis is active. Very well, let's continue. Let's start with the X axis. In this case, X is linear. What does that mean? Remember that the stepper motor has 3200 steps per turn and the motor moves the trolley on the X axis from side to side. And to do that, I use a half inch five stars acne thread rod. Five stars means five threads wrapped around the rod. So for each turn of the screw, the nut moves half an inch. So you require two turns to move one inch. So two turns times 3200 micro steps will give you 6400 micro steps. That is two turns to move one inch. So two turns by 3200 micro steps will give us 6400 micro steps per inch. So on the little window called steps per unit, we'll enter 6400. On the velocity window, I liked about 120 inches a minute. On the acceleration window, I liked around four inches per second per second. All these parameters you can change to suit your machine. Remember to save the settings. The same apply to the Z axis, providing that we use the same type of rod. Usually I prefer velocity around 75 inches a minute on the Z axis. Same acceleration. Safe settings. Good. Lastly, on the rotary axis or A axis. This axis is configured differently than the other axis. Here is where we apply the results of our calculations on the micro steps per degree of the big gear. In this case, 37.64702. On the velocity window, we will enter 2500. This seems to be a high number. But remember, in a rotary axis, we're talking about degrees per minute. This is equivalent to about 8.5 seconds per revolution, or about 8 turns per minute. On acceleration, I will enter 489 degrees per second per second and try it. This I can change later. Remember to save all changes. Close the window. We go to menu to configure, save settings. Good. Now let's close the program and get it done. We have configured our rotary axis on Mac 3. On my next video, I will show how I connected the rotary axis to my CNC. And I will try to test it, turning and engraving a piece so we can actually see it work. I hope this tutorial has been informative. If you found this video useful, give it a thumbs up. Also, you might consider subscribing and click on the bell notification so you won't miss anything new. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time.